Hey y'all, uh, it's uh, Sunday, May 3rd, we're uh, out in the garage here, uh, a whole host of things going on today, but I wanted to bring you, before I did anything else, I wanted to bring you this 2.0 uh, track with video and uh, what the things I left out um, in that first one. A lot of times I just assume you know what I'm talking about, um, and uh, uh, I got a, a question or two about uh, what to do with this method when you move your wheels all the way in and they're touching the chassis and you're still not uh, flush or even on this outside edge. So I'm going to bring you that real quick and also um, make a couple more points. Um, what to be aware of and, uh, and, and how it affects things. So let's get you up off that engine and uh, show you what we got going on. Um, assuming the wheel is still way out here okay and this is this is touching the front and rear and you're you're this far away okay and let's say it's like this right we're assuming your steering is straight your steering wheel is straight it's locked down it can't move you would go ahead and and uh you know open these um jam nuts down you would adjust the the tie rod until it got straight you would measure with a tape measure or whatever device you want to use um, to get it uh, the the measurement the same, then you'd go to the other side, obviously, and do the same thing. With this locked down, knowing that square, um, you'd go ahead and do the same thing here. Now, <clears throat> um, measuring over from a projected straight line with a string, you can do it with the string as well. I'll bring you a video of doing string uh, once we get this thing on the ground, and. Uh, show you how we do that we got to get a back bumper on it because that's what we anchor the uh, the fishing line to to wrap it around the front but um be be very aware um if in fact you are going to have a wider rear than the front um that it's the same distance on right and left at that point i wouldn't worry about the gap between the chassis and the wheel or the tire on right to left being exactly the same as I would be making sure that this measurement is exactly the same. Of course, you have to take into consideration that the tire, uh, wheel and tire assembly is the same distance from the kingpin on right to left. Now, in most instances with front brakes, it's going to be very, very close, if not the same. Um, if you're just on a, on a spindle mount wheel, that doesn't have front brakes there's you know you could you could hit, get a, a a little discrepancy in spacers on your stub axle that could move one one way or another so you want to address that as well first probably start here and make sure if it is adjustable that they do measure the same from kingpin out um you want that that's very important because if you've got one wheel further outside the footprint right the the equal footprint um it's gonna play. It's gonna play hell on your on your corner weight. And I know there's. I've just, just read some things online from go kart guys who are I guess, are relatively uh, successful go kart guys that claim that that weight and, and all that doesn't make any difference. And uh, that's absolute hogwash. Every race car ever built, ever driven, ever raced competitively uses scales to balance the car or to get an idea at least get a a, a, a a datum point a set point of what's going on with the car anybody who's worked on a race car team will tell you it's absolutely imperative that your car is balanced and that you 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 keep track of the the weights um for different tracks for different conditions or whatever uh change in front to rear percentage uh, what, what, what have you, especially on a road racing car. But, um, you know, in, in, in the United States, looking at these, these lay down, this American lay down car and the, the rectangular foot pattern compared to the wedge foot pattern of a super cart or, uh, or a CIK type cart. Um, we, we know the CIK cart is built for a sprint track, what we call a sprint track. An American sprint track is very short. Point shoot. I mean, you know, if it's a shifter card, it's na 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 banging up and down. It's for young guys. Trust me, and old guys, it's not fun. But um, for big long tracks, um, not only do we do we have a longer wheelbase, we're five or six, seven, eight inches longer in wheelbase than a CIK, which is usually about forty inches. 
we're anywhere between 45 and 48. Um, for the American laydown chassis for rules for road racing, you can't be any shorter than I think 40, 42, 45, I think maybe for a laydown. So um, it, it, it makes a difference. I mean, if you think about it, folks, look at the modern Formula One car. Other than that ridiculous bar that they put on the front of the damn thing, um, they, there's the, the wheelbase, the footprint is more like an American laydown than it is a supercart or a CIK cart, okay? Back in the old days, rear end was real wide, the front was a little more narrow, big beefy tires on the back, so, so to speak, whatever. But um, they look far more today like the footprint you're looking at right here, where the outside is almost even. If the tires are bigger in the rear, they're spaced inward. You know, not outward like they were in the, the 70s and 80s. Um, so uh, getting back to the, 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 the setting this, this standard is really, first and foremostly, like I've mentioned before, getting each individual front corner square with your rear axle. That's why we want to touch just the front and back of each. You can do this with just wheels with no tires on. If you want to be, you know, you think, well, maybe, you know, if there's a bubble in the tire, you're right. You're absolutely right. That could cause an issue. You can do it with just a wheel to give you that good straight square shot, right? And then just use wheels on the front as well. Um, you know, there's a couple different ways to look at it. But again, I wouldn't worry so much about the gap between the chassis right and left not being the same as long as you have that gap in the front the same because, again... Regardless of what these people are telling you, that, that weight doesn't make any difference. Um, these are people that probably never bothered to put their go-kart on a scale. Uh, and because they're, they're successful, they run up front or, or, or win races or whatever, they, they think it's hogwash. Well, I, I'll tell you a story about the go-kart that I race now. Um, when I got it, it was a loner. I took my engine, my running gear, and bolted it onto this go-kart because I had sold mine and was in the process of building a new one. And until then, I was, I was on loan. That's this car here. That's the car we got now, the orange and, and black cart. This is what it looked like. It still has Scott's name on it here, okay? Just putting my stuff on that cart and going to a racetrack I've raced at hundreds of times, hundreds of times, I went four seconds a lap faster in that go-kart with the same engine, with the same driver. I didn't gain any talent overnight. I didn't lose a bunch of weight. My motor didn't gain a bunch of horsepower. It was simply that car was balanced. And the others that I, obviously, that I was driving, I'd never bothered to put them on a scale, so I didn't know what they were doing. Um, balance in your cart, scale in your cart, extremely important. All the guys, J.R. Osborne, one of the fastest guys in, in, the, in the fastest class of carts, uh, John West. Um, you know, you don't need to like any of these people to know. Look at, their, look at their results and then ask them what they do and they'll tell you. I have my own set of scales, a whole rack at home. I balance this thing. I spend hours tuning this thing in. Um, it isn't a mistake. It isn't a fluke that, that that's what happens. But again... Running your rear wider than your front isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, you, moving your rear out will help give you rear grip. If the car is ass happy, um, turns in good, you know, nice and, nice and sharp and, and, and good, strong, pointed feeling at the front, but you get to the apex or when you go back to the gas, it, it gets snapped loose. Just start moving the rear end out, moving out a, a quarter inch on each side, and you're going half inch wide each time and it'll come right around i'm telling you, you the wider you get the more grip that's why a cik cart is so wide in the back 55 inches and only 45 or 48 at the front huge corner grip you know huge on that short little wheelbase as well which uh, again helps that grip so um dealing with a laydown an american laydown um the classes dictate what we're allowed to do the dimensions were the maximum were allowed minimum were allowed and you work within those rules the nice thing is you're working with everybody that's dealing with the same numbers right so um scaling your go-kart is extremely important getting the front square to the rear extremely important it helps your straight line speed you're free rolling 
straight line speed. Um, keeps everything in alignment. Obviously, the narrower it is, the, the smaller the hole you're making, uh, and, and, and the better it's going to go through the air. Um, getting down low helps as well. Um, I don't think your helmet up an inch is going to make a huge difference over it being down an inch more. Um, because you, you're making the hole at the front of the car. By the time it gets back here, it's already trying to come back down. Uh, when we can get into all that some other time. Let's stay with what we're doing here. Um, again, like I said, this isn't necessarily a bad thing having the rear wider than the front as long as the, the distance in on each side is the same. Start with your kingpin and measure out. That's um, what we call scrub radius. Uh, look into this stuff. Google it, search it, whatever. There's plenty of good writings from race car guys out there that'll teach you the fundamentals of uh, track width, uh, scrub radius, all that kind of stuff, um, what to do when you have handling issues uh, and what adjustments to make and, and to be patient. I mean, that's why we do these test days. That's why I love doing the test days because you can try out so many things that you just don't have the, the opportunity to do in a race weekend format. They give you, let's be honest, they give you what, eight minutes, 10 minutes at the most? On a Friday when a whole day is devoted to, to practice and they still they have four groups of different carts, right? You can't just, it's not just a free-for-all like on a test day. It doesn't matter who's on a track. You're out there with everybody. And there's very few of you, so there's always a lot of open track. Good, um, good for, for, for getting, you know, comparing laps and, and uh, data from, from one minute to the next, literally. Um, so that's, that's uh, the, the things you want to try is making small adjustments and then taking note of what they're doing. Um, again, uh, I, I can't stress enough how important testing is. If it wasn't important, F1 wouldn't do it, IndyCar wouldn't do it, NASCAR wouldn't, nobody would do it. Uh, if it didn't pay any dividends, you know, um, they wouldn't bother doing it. I don't understand why go-kart guys don't get into it anymore. I mean, I'm just some dude in Roseville in his garage, and I love testing, man. Um, to me, it's far more technical than racing. I mean, let's be honest. How many times, even if you, even if you win your race, how many times have you, can you say every corner of every lap was, was I did it perfect every time? You make mistakes all over the place. Testing, comparing what I just did 20 minutes ago after I made changes to what I'm doing right now, your, your driving has to be very, very critical, uh, very scrutinized. You have to scrutinize the daylights out of yourself. I mean, even if you're not perfect, you got to try to replicate that over and over and over again, you know, um, to get true data. So there you go. I hope that answered some of the questions about, you know, if you're moving your rear end in that uh, you run out of room because you're bumping into the chassis. Another thing you could do is take your other front tire off and replace that rear and continue to move it in. If you really want to get it, you know, use that projected line to get everything straight and square first. You can always do that as well. Um, you know, there's no saying you have to have what's on there that you're actually going to lay on the track. Um, what, we, what you're doing is just trying to get those front corners squared up to the rear end first. In our case, we're killing two birds with one stone. We're trying to get our overall width set so we can lock our Nerf bars down and get our body work. Think about getting our body work going and all that kind of stuff. So um, moving forward, um, we'll, like I said, we'll bring in some string work on this thing. Uh, maybe sometime after we run it, maybe right from the racetrack, we'll, we'll run a string on it and make a quick video on, on how we do that. But uh, this will get you in the ballpark. Um, enjoy your Sunday. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Roseville. It's going to be in the 70s. I'll have this sweatshirt off in no time. Heading over to Brother Rich's house to uh, pump the antifreeze out of my cart. Uh, we won't be getting any more cold weather, so uh, going to run some water through it, and then we're going to we're going to drain all the water out once we get it rinsed through. Uh, we got a small uh, leak on our head gasketing, our O-rings. I found a little puddle of uh, antifreeze on top of the intake of the motor. And I noticed where it had been coming down. So that's a new head. It's a brand brand new head, unused, brand new head. So um, Robert didn't put brand new O-rings in. So uh, yeah, we're going to put new O-rings in it and then fill it up with water again. So maybe even get it running. So we'll bring you some of that over there. Talk to you all later. God bless. Hope that helped. Hope that answered some questions, guys. Um, string them up. Get her going. Check it out. Uh,
it's not all doom and gloom. We got to do something. We got to enjoy our lives while we're here. And mine is, is using my gifts and playing with go-karts. We're praying for y'all. God bless.